Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. I am back with another interesting topic in the Tosca automation playlist. So continuing with our topic on test automation obstacles, let's look at our next obstacle, which is called the meeting scheduler. Now this is another dynamic table or a static table, which has got some a calendar like structure with some timings and then the days and then the status of uh, the meeting room, whether it is available or not. And out of this, uh, we need to find a room on Thursday, uh, 11 to 13 is the timing. And we need to find whether it is open or closed. Okay, so basically this particular status, right? So on Thursday, we need to find this particular timing. And then we need to find the status, whether it is open or closed. And then we need to type that particular status uh, in this uh, text box. So for me, it is open right now. So if I type this, then the obstacle is completed. Okay, so it seems to be a pretty simple one, uh, considering we have done some complex tables. And uh, this one is pretty simple. The reason why it is simple is because uh, it has already provided us the row, okay? And also it has provided us the column. So the Thursday refers to the column header and uh, the 11 to 13 timing is the row header. So once you know uh, which row or which column you have to uh, work on, then it becomes a little easier. Now, in some other scenario, this could be more interesting or a little difficult when you don't know uh, the timing, okay? So in this case, it is fixed, but think that um, it is a dynamic timing. So you need to find the status of that particular timing and it keeps on changing, then it becomes a little interesting. But for us, uh, in this particular case, it is static. So we'll go ahead and automate this uh, in Tosca. So coming back to Tosca, the first step is again to scan this particular module. So we'll go to our obstacles. And here we will scan this particular application. Okay, and I basically need uh, these two elements. One is the timetable, and the other is the result text, which is a text box, okay? And then I'm going to rename the module with this obstacle number. And then I'm going to save this and close this, okay? Now, uh, going back to Tosca again, uh, going back to test cases section and obstacles, we'll be creating a new obstacle test case. And then uh, we are going to add the module to this particular test case, okay? Okay, so we have got the table and the text. Now, what we need to do here is pretty simple. So we need to select the row and the row here is this, right? So 11 to 13 is the text which is present in this particular row, right? So we can take that text directly and Tosca will be able to select it with this particular text, right? So we'll go back here and in the row, we will put this particular text. Okay, so it will uh, select the row based on this particular text if it is unique. If it is not unique, then um, we need to make some more adjustments, but right now it is unique, okay? And then in the cell, uh, we can check that uh, these are all the column headers which are displaying here. So we need to select Thursday here. And uh, then instead of verify, we will do a buffer, okay? And uh, in this, I will say B underscore status. So it will be stored uh, in this particular buffer name, which is B underscore status. And then in the result text, I can just use the buffer, okay? So this time around, I will use the send keys. And inside this, I will use the buffer, okay? So B underscore status. So this is all we need to do in this particular test case. Um, and now let's change the obstacle to completed. 
and then uh, let's try and execute this and let's see whether it is able to grab the status and enter it into the particular text box, right? So run this in Scratchbook. Okay, so as you can see, it was able to grab the status based on the row name. And then uh, based on the column, it picked up the status which is present in that particular cell, okay? And then it entered it into the text box, which completed the obstacle. So a pretty simple obstacle. You just need to know how to steer the web tables based on different row heading or the column heading, or you can use different types of action modes based on your specific scenario. That's all for this particular video. If you have any questions, then please leave it in the comments. If you like this video, then please subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.